For CMUEagles.com, I'm Brett Neese here alongside head women's basketball coach James Arnold. Coach, what happened in Graceland last night that unfortunately prevented your team from getting the win? Well, you know, I thought we came out a little bit sluggish. It's a tough place to play. We've talked about it a ton of times, Brett, that uh, winning on the road in league play is extremely challenging at all levels. Um, the hack this year is stronger than it's been in the past, and uh, we're probably not as deep as we've been in the past, and we're we're, we're, we're battling some things with flu and some things like that. And, you know, when Graceland came out on senior night, and they played really hard. Um, I thought there were moments where we did some good things, but we could not withstand the way that, that how hard they played. And they made some big shots down the stretch to pull back away after we cut it. Um, and uh, just overall, a really good night for Graceland. Um, we gave up 90 points, which is a lot of points. Um, a, a lot of that could be attributed to how well they played, but we weren't especially crisp and uh, we weren't as good as we should have probably been. But uh, like I said, tough uh, Tough sledding on the road in this league, um, and uh, we're just excited to get back on the court uh, Saturday to try to get things turned in the right direction. Hey, let's talk about Peru State. It is senior day. Can you tell me a little bit about this class of seniors and what they've done for this program? Well, you know, first, Kyra Williams is the uh, first kid that's ever played four years for me because I spent all those years as a junior college coach, so it's, it's tough to see her go, and it's really tough because this is a kid that didn't even get a chance to play all four years. Um, when Kyra left us, we were 6-0 and and ranked in the top 25, and, and since then we haven't done quite so well, and she was a big piece for us, and it's going to be tough to see that kid that's played for four years and, and like I said, the first four-year kid for me go. You know, Morgan Vetter has rewritten the record book here and has put up huge numbers and continues to be one of the best shooters in the country and if we're going to make a run uh, in the playoffs we need to do so uh, with with a big help from her uh, uh, Chelsea Panier is a, is a kid that came in she's a legacy here uh, her mom and uh, aunt and, and dad and uncle all played here um, has really done a nice job of showing some leadership this semester has been um, really productive from outside the arc it's continued to go hard and is is, is not given up at all uh, Burgundy Lewis is a, another junior college transfer from Fort Scott um, has come in and, and brought a lot of athletic a lot of athleticism to the lineup um, has had some big moments for us continues to go hard um, when she's rebounded of the basketball we've got a, a tremendous track record so we need to continue to, to in these next last few games get her on the boards and, and, and be active and then Jesse Ellis, the Alaskan. Um, this kid is really this year playing out of position, uh, is playing a point guard spot after playing a 3-4 before so that's quite a transition and uh, just recently hit her thousandth point for her career and uh, is uh, doing a lot of things that we ask her, um, doing a lot of things that we ask her that she's not really comfortable with. But when we've been successful, she's thrived there. And uh, we really need her and this other, the rest of the senior group to uh, lead us through this uh, last game and lead us into the playoffs because we're talented enough to make a run at this thing. And uh, we're going to need those seniors along with the other ones to kind of to kind of uh, huddle up put the, the pass behind us, win this final game, get ourselves a seven seed, um, get that, that home game in the first round, and then um, take care of business. Looking at your last game against Peru State, there was a lot of scoring. What do you need to do to limit their point total this time around? Well, you know, we've given up um, – last two games we've given up like 164 points Mid-America's got whatever they wanted um, last night against Graceland they got whatever they wanted and um, it's it's and against Peru the first time they got a lot of easy baskets for some, whatever reason uh, as coaches we've got to find a way to, to mix some things up so that teams aren't so comfortable against us um, Graceland was entirely too comfortable offensively last night and and pretty much got whatever shot they wanted we did a fine job of scoring in about all those games, with the exception of Mid America, and their defense was special that day. But we've done it. We can get we can put points up ourselves, but we got to find a way to make sure that they're not very comfortable. We got to get out and deny harder. Um, we've got to make sure that when they do miss, that they don't get second and third chance points. That's hurt us against Peru in the first matchup. Peru's very dangerous offensively for sure. They've got some pieces, and up there at their place, they played extremely well and and kind of put us in a and, a, and a, a, a tilt at the time. And uh, so it's a great chance for us to close out, get that win, and, and, and try to get some, a little bit of a payback from the loss earlier. Uh, but we're going to have to make them uncomfortable. We're going to have to control the boards, and we're going to have to make them pay inside. If your team can't keep them off the scoreboard, your team is going to have to do the scoring. Who's it got to be from your squad that has to score early and often to get your team going? Well, you know, we've been putting up some points um, without one or two pieces really having great nights. This group is capable of scoring even on tough nights. The question is, when we're not scoring, um, um, are we going to have enough emphasis uh, mentally on doing the little things? It's really easy when shots are going in and we're hitting a bunch of threes and, and we're getting backdoor cuts and we're getting high lows and we're making baskets. 
It's real easy to go to the other end and defend. It's real easy to go to the other end and dive on the floor. It's real easy to go to the other end and do those things. And naturally, that's for all teams and for us included. So what we got to try to do is if we do go a possession or two without a basket, we got to still go to the other end of the floor and dive. We got to still go to the other end of the floor and scrap. And uh, that's going to take some mental toughness. I'm excited about it being senior day. I think we'll get something out of that. I'm excited about it being the final regular season game because everybody wants to go out in that regular season game with a win. And uh, I think the ladies know that we're playing for that seven seed, which is important. That's the side of the bracket that we need to be on as opposed to being the eight. We're either the seven or the eight, and we want to be the seven. Looking at some of the stats of the past couple of games, Vetter, she only has one three in her last two contests. And you mentioned, I think, another kid that has missed 11 in a row last night against Graceland. What's going on with those two lately? Because that's their game. That's The three-point range is their game. And what's, what's been happening? Well, there's a lot of pressure on both of them, and that's never easy. And a lot of pressure on those guys is... is not always fair, but um, that's kind of where we're at offensively. They're both great shooters. Um, defensively, we've got to credit Mid-American Nazarene for really making them work extremely hard for every shot they get. And then when they do get a shot, they're like maybe surprised they're so wide open. Um, Morgan's been battling the flu, and that didn't help last night. Her minutes were limited at 19 minutes, and, and she was battling through that. But just – really only got a couple of looks, and then we didn't necessarily find her when she was open. So as a unit, we need to make sure for the playoff run, but most importantly against Peru State, we got to get a pivot point in the post. we got to get the ball inside so then they either collapse or we score one-on-one. -on -one. It puts a lot of pressure on our post player to score one-on-one, -on -one, but that's what we've got to do. Once they start helping and doubling, our spacing should allow those shooters to get some open looks. And quite honestly, they're just going to have to make them if we want to make a run at this thing. Good shooters. A lot of pressure on them. All that ends up and, – and good defense. They're drawing a lot of attention. You get the number one and number two leading three-point shot makers in the league on the same team. That's a great asset to have, but that also means when they take that away, it takes a lot of our offensive ability away. But I will tell you two things about that. That's exactly what we need to do to Culver – I'm sorry, to Peru's guards. We need to make them have to work as hard as our shooters are first. And secondly, we're scoring enough points to win. We scored 75 points last night. That should have been enough to win. So the effort's going to have to be on the defensive end of the floor, and the focus is going to have to be on the toughness on the defensive end of the floor. How excited are you for the playoffs as this is the last game of the regular season tomorrow? Well, you know, we're real excited about this game because this can lay the foundation of where we're at. Like I said, and I can't say it enough, we've talked with the ladies about it. We really need to get this win. We want this 15th win. We want a chance to get a 16th win. We want a home playoff game, and we want to be on this side of the bracket that the seven would give us. Um, I'm excited to get to survive in advance because – in years past, we've always had a, a really nice record, and we've always done a really good job. This year, it's not where we thought it would be, but zero and zero comes into play. In the past, I never really wanted to talk about zero and zero. I wanted to say, look, we're better than them. Um, we're, our record proves that. Um, this year, our record doesn't necessarily prove it, but I still think we're better than a lot of these teams we've been getting beat by. So zero and zero and survive in advance is something I think this group can um, um, put their hat on and, and figure out a way to do something with. Central Methodist University takes on Peru State College this Saturday, February 28th. It is senior day. Tip-off is set for 2 p.m. It's the last game of the regular season, Coach. Finish it off strong. You betcha. Thanks a lot, man.